Hi guys, let's pop on over to M119. Okay, fantastic. So what we're going to do today is we're just going to look at how to draft a raglan sleeve. So it's going to be a pretty quick video. Um, so raglan sleeves, um, let me just pull up what one looks like so you know what I'm talking about. Um, they're very common for knits. You can do them out of wovens. It's not you know, impossible. However, I haven't really seen a ton of raglan sleeves if they are being done in wovens. They're typically done um, for like coats and it's something that's going to be a little bit um, more kind of oversized and big. They're not great for wovens that are like super fitted. Um, so here they are. Let's just click on the images. You've, you've all seen them. So basically like that, you know, standard baseball shirt typically um, highlights the raglan sleeve seam by um, doing like an alternate color, making the sleeves one color um, and the body uh, some, something different. So this is the so uh, raglan seam and, uh, and what it does is it eliminates the um, armhole seam that comes along here. Basically it, it extends the armhole seam and makes it come up to the neck. Um, and as you can see it's very popular for like t-shirts and things like that. Um, I think we'd be hard pressed to scroll through here and find any wovens. Uh, let's see if we can find anything out of woven. Now we're basically just going to see that that baseball tee. Um, oh, there we go. It's a jacket. So the jacket has it. So like I said, yeah. Oh, the shirt has it, but you see it's oversized. Um, it's not very good for fitted, uh, very tight fitting uh, wovens. Um, it's not really great for the shoulder. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have the, here we go. This is sort of like a printed sort of different thing. That's actually, that's a cool hoodie. Um, oh yeah. So, okay. So how do we draft this thing? It's not too difficult. Um, basically what we do is we sort of chop off parts of the bodice and add them to the sleeve. So let's see how we do it. get rid of the skirt sloper first off um, just because we don't need it now what I want to do is like I said let's do like you can do any length raglan sleeve that you want but you know I'll just do it full length because it doesn't really matter the first thing that you want to do is um, Figure out what your raglan seam is going to look like on your uh, shirt pieces. So essentially it comes from like about, I'd say like 0.7. You don't want to do it too high. Um, but about like the arm, this sort of like, so this is the armpit pit. But about this sort of round area in the sleeve. And you want to bring it up to the neckline. So it's actually going to be very much like a yoke seam in that respect. On the back, of course, it's going to be similar, but um, I'm not going to have it go across like the yoke seam does. It's it's going to do the same thing. It's going to go here up to the to the neckline. Did you did you? So um, again, with like with any seam, you can draft it first. Now you can play around with it if you want. If you want to do some crazy little thing with it, you can. Again, any kind of crazy thing is is harder to sew. Um, and typically, we just have it go straight. That's the style. But if you want to do something different, you can. I'm going to do just a very standard uh, raglan, and I'm going to keep it from just about like the, the full part of this curve. And I'm just going to cut straight to the neckline. 
And again, wherever you put it, it's it's really up to you and, and your, you know, how you want the raglan seam to look like. So you want to put it down here, you want to put it up here. That's that's really going to be up to you. Let's put it about right here. That looks nice. Okay. Looking good. I'm going to keep that there for now and let's go to the back and for here what I want to do is close this dart because that's going to get in the way so I don't want it and if need be we can get rid of this dart too or move it down if it's going to get in the way of the seam it doesn't look like it's going to get in the way of the seam so I'm just going to press on again this is going to be I'm assuming this is going to be a knit garment so um, you might want to do all the stuff to this if you are going to do you know a knit shirt with raglan sleeve. You might want to do all the stuff first that I showed you in the previous lesson to prep your sloper as if it were a knit. And we are going to uh, absolutely assume that this is a knit. And again, I want to kind of look for the full part. I'm not going to go all the way down here because again, I don't want this line to like go through the open part. So I'm going to go about like right there and then let's do this right there. That looks good. Now, um, you guys have heard that I, I, this, I feel like this dips a little bit too much, so I'm just going to correct that because I don't like it. Might get rid of some of these points as well, but actually, they're just going to sort of help me. Okay, perfect. That looks nice. Okay, so um, now that we have the front and back, I'm going to keep them there for now. Um, and I'm going to look at uh, my armhole here, or my sleeve here, and I want to determine what is my front and what is my back of my sleeve. One notch equals front, two notches equal back. And that's going to be very important because we have a back and front piece that we need to be lined up. Uh, I'm going to zoom out a little bit and we're going to line up these pieces. Now, what's going to happen um, is here is sort of the end of the armhole. So this part of the armhole is still going to get attached to this part here. And then we're going to um, basically, this is the whole armhole now. Kind of weird, right? But that's the way it is. The shoulder seam gets sort of put up here. So that's what we're going to do. So um, I'm going to bring this sleeve down and I'm going to, we're only going to work on the top, so um, I might zoom in just on the top, but I'm going to drag out a guideline and put it right in the center, flop. And this is going to um, basically represent uh, my straight of grain and also that sort of top sleeve that's going to go up and now become the sort of top of my my shoulder, thy shoulder seam. So what I want to do is I'm going to grab these pieces and they actually need to be flipped around because here's my shoulder piece and this is my seam piece. The seam piece needs to go on the outside and the shoulder part needs to go on the inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, transform, flip horizontal. Bloop. Okay, then I'm going to rotate it so my shoulder seam is straight up. Oop. Okay, and we're going to put that on the side that it needs to be go on for right now. We're going to do our final adjustments later. But for right now, I'm just going to kind of plop it right there. Going to do the same thing here with my front piece. Maybe I'll rotate it first this time. I can't see that. Should sure not let me see the shoulder seam. Oh well, I'll just guess. I guess. All right, not too bad. We'll do final adjustments later. So, and I'm going to flip that as well. Okay, I'm going to line that up. 
Now what I want to do is I need to get this to be a nice smooth line. So what I want to do is I want to notch basically and, and tell myself where this ends because where this ends, this amount ends, this needs to begin. So here on my back, I'm going to do a quick measurement. Ooh, let me zoom in because I, I don't think I got the right point. There, that looks good. And all right, 2.68, I'm going to take note of that. And let's do the front. Oops, okay, okay. Three point six nine. All righty. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in on my sleeve sloper now. In here, and I want to know where those points are. So I'm going to go ahead and let's delete any of these because we're going to have to redraft it and make sure that they are non grading because I don't want anything getting in the way of my measurements. So all these points I want to make sure are non-grading. And I, somehow I can't change that. Can I delete it? Okay, well, okay. This one is graded, good, good, good. And none of these, none of these. Okay, good. So I'm gonna place a point on here. This is my front. So I want it to be 3.69 uh, inches away. And this is my previous point. And let's grade it so it's nice and noticeable. Okay. I might get a little bit confused, so I'm just going to delete this other point in favor of this other one. Oops, what did I get rid of? Oh, the notch. I don't want to get rid of the notch. Okay, well, I guess we're going to have to get rid of the notch anyway. Okay, so that is the point I want to be matching it up to. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Okay, this should be okay. Let's add our point in. And this one's going to be 2.68. Grade it. And this one's going to be the next one. Okie dokie. Okay. So there's our points right up here. Number five and number eight. And uh, so this will allow us to sort of line up our pieces so that uh, seam is going to be uh, proper length. So what I'm going to do is, let's zoom out a little bit so I can see the whole thing. And I want to kind of play around with this. So I'm going to, this, I'm going to make the neck a little bit bigger. But that's okay, that's just the neckline. The neckline is just going to be a little bit bigger. But I'm going to kind of angle this like so. Not so much. I don't want so much of a big angle. I clicked, I clicked. And again, we're just going to kind of play around. And I want this to really sort of match up right there. And this to match up right, we did the point 0.8, right? That was point 0.8. That's going to match up a lot, kind of nicer. Uh, let's play around with the rotation. I'm going to rotate this inward a little bit. I want, it to, I want it to line up. I don't want it to overlap. 
Unless the neck will be too small. They can open it up a little bit, that's fine. Okay, so that's pretty much as what I'm gonna have to do. So I'm gonna just open up the neck just a wee bit. Sew that back down. And actually, let's rotate this guy out a wee bit too. So I want to maintain that neck. Now we're going to clean this up with a draft. This is really going to be our kind of um, simply our, uh, um, how am I going to put it? Um, guideline. This is just a, a sort of template. So what I'm going to do is um, protect it. Sorry, sort of spaced out there for a minute. Just checking something else. So let's go ahead and protect all of our pieces. And let's go ahead and draft. Okay, let me, let me move it up a little bit so I can see the bottom. Oh, I don't want to because it's already lined up. Okay, good, didn't let me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's draft it anyways, even though I can't see the bottom. Nope. It's very straight here, so I want this line to be nice and straight. And we'll curve this. I'm going to kind of smooth it out. I don't want any kind of bumps or anything. So very straight. I'm going to go straight down here. And then let's finish it off. All right. Dun, 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 dun. We have our raglan sleeve. Hooray! Now, um, I want to mention just a couple things. This is kind of a, a rough way to do it. Um, you might want to do a couple extra fittings, and it really is going to depend on the fabric. So the reason that this works is because what happens in the shoulder, as you can see here, we actually took out some of the shoulder length here, which is okay to do in knit because it stretches out. It'll stretch out and around the shoulder, um, but oh, I took it away. But again, in wovens, if we were to do this, because the fabric doesn't stretch, we made, we didn't really do anything else here, but we made, we kind of took away from the shoulder. So that is going to create a lot of fitting issues um, when we do it, in, if we do it in uh, wovens. Oh, the last thing we want to do here, very important, is to indicate what is the front and what is the back. Um, uh, because, of course, and we'll, we'll, we can put corresponding notches here. Um, because, of course, we really want to know what is the front and what is the back. And again, you're going to go ahead and do a double notch on the back. Um, let's put one, you know, right, right here. Um, and from the previous, this is the previous, let's just make it a nice, oh, uh, five and a half sounds fine. Um, uh, okay, and then in the notch properties, you can, um, let's open up main, in the type, you get a double V, can I get a double V? I know there's a way to get a double V getting now. I guess I guess I can just put another one right next to it if I want for so we did it at, yeah. 
give it a eighth of an inch away. So there's my double V for the back and a single V for the front. My next, let's do it. It's fine. And then of course we just always have to do them as well on uh, their corresponding pieces. So that was five and a half for my previous. And then you double it up and do the same thing on the other side. Um, so there we go. Um, Hopefully uh, that was helpful. Again, uh, maybe if you want to try it out for a knit. Um, it is a fun little design. You can, it's a nice to have that sort of ability to kind of contrast. And again, you can, you can play with those sleeves if you want to, those seams, if you want to make them a little bit more fun, uh, be my guest. Um, and uh, I want to show you guys, let me actually get out of here first. Um, the new puzzle. Nope. So I loved your little cranes, but I'm going to up the ante. This might be our last puzzle. I don't know. We're sort of getting waning interest in puzzles. Um, I'm going to go to the other one so I don't have as much lag. It's going to be another origami, so again, you can use any kind of paper you want, just as long as it's squared. And I have my own example. I might run downstairs and grab it. I should have brought it up beforehand. Well, it is springtime. And springtime is time for bunnies to be popping up out of the ground and eating things. I know we passed Easter. This should have been, I guess, an Easter assignment, but. Oh man, sorry, my internet is slow, slow, slow. Hold on, while this loads, I'm going to go grab the example. I'm not going to do any kind of easy ones like these. This is the one we're going to do. His channel is actually fantastic. If you're, if this, and he's the sort of way I have gotten into origami, it's, it's super fun. And his channel is absolutely fantastic. But this is the one you're going to do for extra credit. The story of a pair of lungs that smoked as a teen and never grew. So this is your little guy, and it's a lot of fun. We'll leave it at that. There should be enough for you guys. Um, and there's my version. So it's not impossible. It's just a little tricky. Um, and I'll see you guys next week. Um, next week, again, we're going to be doing uh, 3D stuff, um, which is actually really fun. It's a fun departure. We're not going to be doing any more draping stuff, or I'm sorry, drafting stuff. If there's anything that I haven't covered that you want me to cover, let me know. I've asked this before. I haven't gotten any requests. 
but do let me know, and then that'll be our last assignment. So there's nothing due next week, just to be clear. All this stuff is is just sort of, you know, for your information. Um, if you guys want to do knits for your final project. Um, again, the final project stuff, um, I'll double check, it should be up there. Um, it's going to be two things. It's going to be your own draft um, and a given draft that will be given out the last day of class. But um, So next week we're going to do 3D stuff. Um, there'll be a small assignment tied to that, uh, but it's pretty easy and it's pretty fun. It's a little bit of a different uh, stuff than we have been doing. Um, and then we'll work on the final. If you get stuck or you want help or anything, just email me. Always, if you are going to ask me questions, please email me your flat. So do your flat first or else I really don't know what you're talking about. Um, but have a great weekend and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.